I'm here with art clay silver expert Jackie Trudy and today we are learning how to do marbling. Jackie, this is a great project. This is a wonderful project and it's a brand new technique. Oh really? Yeah, Aida took three years, Aida Chemical Industries that makes the product, um, took three years to figure out how to put the silver and the copper clays together and fire them in one firing. It's really not been done before. Oh wow, so we're seeing something brand new we're and seeing these something rings brand are new. gorgeous. The rings are really beautiful and it just marbles the silver and the copper clay together seamlessly in one firing. So um, the basic tools are just uh, an underlay and something to roll it on. We have a ring mandrel here because we're making a ring, but if you didn't want to make a ring, you could do a pendant, earrings, whatever you want with the same technique. Okay. And some basic tools. So the first thing we're going to do first is, of course, always with silver clay, you want to get a little bit of release on your hands uh, if you're going to handle the clay. The first thing we're going to do with the ring, because it is copper and some people can't wear copper against their skin. Oh, right is we're going to create a small shell of silver first and I'm just going to take about seven grams of silver and this is out of the package so it's nice and soft and moist and I'm going to roll it into a log a little bit get my roller that I've put some release on and I am just going to roll out a little bit of clay and you want to roll it fairly thin so you don't have to use a lot and then I have this clay cutter here and I'm just going to shorten it just a little bit. So I put it around. And it looks like you wrapped a piece of, um, what do you call that, nonstick yeah, mat? Yeah, there's the nonstick mat around my mandrel, right. So I'm just going to connect that. And I'm not being real fancy with it because we're gonna be putting the copper and the um, marbling over that. So I have that here, but what we wanna do, instead of drying it, because you're always worried about drying the silver right. clay, we wanna keep this moist. So I'm just putting some cling wrap over it to keep it moist. Okay. Now the next step is to get the copper and the silver together. So this is about 15 grams, and you can use any kind of scale to weigh it out. And 15 grams of copper, which is about what this is, and you want to get about seven grams of silver. So you want to make sure this is nice and moist, which this is. It's really important when you're doing the silver to keep it the same softness, each one. So if one is harder than the other or drier than the other, you need to add a drop or two of water. Okay, I was it's just really going to ask important. you, what do you do to make it a little bit moister? Yeah, you just use now? water. It's so all just water make sure soluble. that they feel about the same in terms of tackiness right. and flexibility. And this is 10 grams and I only need about seven. So I'm going to pinch that off again. You should weigh it. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is get ready to marble it. I'll get that piece of silver off of there. So I'm going to take this 15 grams and just break it in half so that I've got little balls, half and half of the copper, and I'm going to do the same for the silver. So I have a little ball of coppers and little balls of silver. Then I'm going to get a clean piece of cling wrap. And I am going to put one copper and one silver together and one silver and one copper together. So they're opposite, like a little checkerboard. Got it. Okay, then I'm gonna fold this and I'm gonna start pressing it together so that they become one piece. The more you fold it, the more marbled it is. So there is one, you see how I just folded it once this way. Then I'm gonna press again. Wow. It's that simple. Then I'm gonna fold it this way from top to bottom. Are you carefully, uh, you know, working around the circle so that you fold? No, I'm just of course pressing not. Okay. the heck out of it and marbling <laughs> yeah. it. All right. And again, that was really twice. So if you do it, you should do it between three and five times. All right. And the more you press, the more marbled it is. So I'm going to do it one more time. Okay. Then. And the reason we're not seeing it marble is because it, it, there's always a layer of copper over it. The marbling is really on the inside, and I will show you how that looks. So now we're going to take this off because now we're ready to put the two together. I've got a paintbrush here, and I'm just going to put a little clear water, nothing fancy, just to wet this so the two, the two will stick together. Roll this a little bit. You want to shorten, you don't want to make it too long. If you make it too long and you have to squish together, it changes the size of the ring. So actually, you want to do this, you want to roll it out so it just about meets. Okay. Do a little bit more. Now with, um, it does shrink a little bit when it's fired, so do you 
recommend making the ring a you, size larger? You make or? the ring a size and a half larger. Okay, size and, size a, half. and a half larger. And what's really cool is with this particular kind of uh, silver and copper clay together, since they're made by the same manufacturer, they shrink about the same. Oh, okay, great. So you don't have to worry about it. And if this gets too big on the bottom, you just squish it together. It really isn't uh, a precise thing at this point in time. And I'm just getting the silver and the copper together. Then what I'm going to do is make a square. So I'm going to flatten one, go to the other side, flatten that, flatten the third side, flatten the fourth side. Push it together a little bit so it's even. And then I'm going to dry it right on the mandrel. Okay, so I'm going to dry it right on the mandrel, and it's going to take a quite a long time to dry. You've got to make sure it's pretty it's, thick. Probably. It's pretty thick. I'd say maybe 40, 45 minutes in something like uh, a hair dryer or um, one of those little mug warmers. If you leave okay. it out, it's going to take at least a day. All right. So we're going to pretend that that's dry, and I happen to have one here that's the same thing, and that's already in a kind of a square, and it's dry. Okay. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Now, what I wanted to show you, I did this on purpose. You see there's spaces there. You're not supposed to have spaces. So this is what you shouldn't do. It should look like this, where it's really nice and tight against the silver. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to file that. So when you file that, it's going to look like this, and that's where you see the marbling. Oh, this when outer you file labor, it, it's This outer layer of, co of copper comes off, and underneath it, you will see all this beautiful silver and copper marbling. Wow, can you do it just a little bit on the sure. on that one so we can see it come out? Yeah. And then do you reserve the powder or is this something that you throw away? That's a terrific question. You reserve the powder and all of the powder then you can actually mix with distilled water and make new clay that's oh, wow. a mixture of the silver Great. and the copper together. So be sure to save all of that. You save everything. And you can see now that the, the silver starts coming out right under that copper layer. So you never want to worry that, oh my gosh, all I see is copper, because the silver's right there. Wow. Okay, and you save all of this. So once you have it, you're almost, you're almost ready to fire. Once you have it done, you're going to sand it with a little bit. I have some 600 and 1200 grit sandpaper. So you're going to smooth it because you want it nice and smooth to go into the, into the kiln. And this is one of the projects you cannot do with a torch. You've got to have you a have kiln. You have to do it in the kiln. You have to have a kiln because of the firing temperature. Because typically when you fire copper, it's above the melting point of silver. So to get these two to melt together, to meld together without alloying them, is, is the secret Japan has come up with. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, so now you have this, and now what we're going to do is put it on. First, you're going to put it on to a regular board, firing board, and this is just a compressed fiber board that goes in the kiln. This goes in open like this, okay. and what you have to do first is you have to put it in the kiln and ramp it to 842 degrees. You don't hold it, you just ramp it there. Once it's done, you pull it out right away. And then it's going to look like that. And that is what it looks like when the binder is all burned out and all you have left is the copper, which is turned black, and the silver. Wow, I'm so glad you told me because if I put this in the kiln and took that out, I would be a little nervous. People would panic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. On yeah. the other hand, if it's still brown, you, you have know, to do it, it again. Ready. It's not ready yet. And we'll have all the instructions on the website. The instructions too. are all going to be there for you to follow and look at. So once you have that, then you let your kiln cool, okay? And the last stage is you take this, and here's a pan. There are many different kinds. Some people use ceramic, some people use small, large. It really doesn't matter, although you may have to tweak your kiln a little bit. Inside is this, and it's activated acid-washed carbon. Oh. This keeps the um, oxygen away because Copper can't be fired in oxygen. That's when it gets fire scale. And that's why people pickle. But with this method, there's no pickling because the carbon protects the piece. So I put the piece in about two inches of carbon, cover it up with quarter inch, maybe half inch of carbon, not a whole lot at all. Put the top on it, put it in the kiln, just like this, 1400 degrees, for four hours. Oh wow, it's not very long really to wait. It, it really isn't, and you can be doing other things. You're sure. not standing there. So 1400 degrees for four hours, and then blink, 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 magically, 
it looks just like this. And now you can see that that black that we'd had before has turned back to copper. And with a stainless steel brush, get that there, you can see now that you have this oh, beautiful yeah. copper and silver. And how you polish it is really up to you. You can see in the samples that we have here is I've high polished them. These. Um, various tools, I've used a rotary tool, I've used hand polishing with different grits of sandpaper. Would you ever tumble these? Um, I don't think the tum you'd have to sand it a little bit first and then tumble it, but I think hand finishing or rotary tool finishing is the, is the best for this. When you're done, um, actually, it's better to let the copper sit and oxidize a little bit and turn dark. So uh, like this piece here. Turn dark. You can also use something called Baldwin's Patina, and that will just take the copper, won't affect the silver, and the Baldwin's Patina darkens it a little bit so that you can see the contrast. Otherwise, yeah. the silver and the copper are fairly bright. Well, it looks pretty either way. I think there's they're a, they're a, really beautiful. And it's every, really interesting to be able to create this technique this way too. Yeah, and every single time it's different. You can't duplicate it exactly. So again, working with metal clay, it's so unique and so individual. It's it's a real joy to work with. Oh yeah, and the patterning is gorgeous too. Yes. You know, let's take a look at these other samples that you brought. Tell us a little bit about this one right here. Um, that one right there. Actually, I used all this leftover filings and stuff and I just added some water to it and then the cross that's there I made it a little bit more mixed together so that you can't really see you just get this nice um, gold effect and then the face was the most mixed so you don't waste anything all right well thank you so much Jackie this is a really really cool project thank you thank you very much and we'll be right back